Hey friends, this is Trish. We appreciate you stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will hit that subscribe button and come back often. And if you're a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. Kay and I love to show our patriotism with patriotic decor. In today's video, we have five super easy, budget-friendly home decor DIYs that are perfect for the summer right through the 4th of July. We hope that you will sit back, relax, and enjoy, and maybe even be inspired to make some yourself. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this scrap piece of 1x2 that I had left over from another project. This piece is about 7 inches long. A scrap piece of a wooden tomato steak I got from Dollar General. This piece is about 3 inches long. A popsicle stick. This is not the jumbo kind, but it is a little bit bigger than the regular one, and I got it from Walmart. A piece of crafting fur. I got mine from Pop Chef for a dollar. You could also use the fuzzy mop from the Dollar Tree for this. Some stick on stars. I like these glittered ones from Hobby Lobby, but you could use any stars that you wanted. A scrap piece of fabric. I got mine from Joann's. If you don't have this, you could just paint on your stripes. Some white chalk paint and some blue acrylic paint. Some Mod Podge a wooden bead or a button plug, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I knew I wanted to use this popsicle stick as the brim of his hat. So I'm gonna cut off one end and then smooth that out with my sanding block. Then I lay it on there, figure out how long I want it to be, and we'll cut off the other end and smooth that out as well. Now I decided to paint all of my pieces with my white chalk paint. This is just gonna give me a base and you really don't have to do this. Now I knew the bottom part I wanted to be white and I will be covering the rest of this, but I thought that the chalk paint would actually give it a good base for the acrylic paint to stick to so I didn't have to use as many coats. I still ended up using three coats of that blue, but this actually helped it not be so streaky. Once that paint was dry, I'm going to come back in with my blue acrylic paint and I'm going to paint about two and a half inches of the top of my 1x2. Now, you see I'm mixing the blue paints. I did not have a color that I thought was absolutely perfect for this. I had a cobalt blue and I had an admiral blue and I thought the admiral blue was too dark and the cobalt blue was too bright. So I'm kind of mixing them together to make my own color. You can use any blue that you would like. We're going to cover the top part of this and our popsicle stick and leave them to dry. Once that paint is dry, I'm going to come back in and on the bottom part, I'm going to put a good layer of Mod Podge and then I'm going to wrap my fabric around it. I really like this fabric because it had the imprint of the stars on it, but you have to be really careful to get it straight. I did have to remove it and put it back on. Now, once you get all that Mod Podge on there and you get it wrapped really well, then you're going to put a pretty heavy coat of Mod Podge all over the top of this and this is just going to seal it in. Then we're going to set this aside and let it completely dry and we can trim off that bottom part. Once our Mod Podge is dry, we're gonna trim off the bottom. Then I'm just gonna use a sanding block and go around those edges to smooth them out. I'm sorry I was out of the camera. I didn't even realize it until it was too late. I decided I wanted dots on his hat rather than stars. To me, it's a lot easier to paint those. I looked for something round and I ended up grabbing one of these mini glue sticks and I would just dip it into my paint and then make random dots all over the hat and we're gonna let that dry. I'm going to add some stars to the brim. I ended up using five and I spaced them out the best that I could, but y'all, it don't have to be perfect. 
to make his beard I'm gonna cut off a piece of my crafting fur then I'm just going to measure it and I'm gonna cut it down to size now I like to V mine off kind of like a real beard is so always flip that over and cut it from the back and it's going to leave this wispy instead of having those cut edges to attach it I'm gonna use some fix all adhesive and some hot glue and then I'm just gonna glue it right there at the base of where the brim is gonna go then we're gonna take our brim and I'm gonna use some more fix all adhesive and some hot glue and I'm gonna glue that down getting it as close to the top of my beard as I can now I'm going to add his nose. I like to take and just kind of move aside some of the shorter pieces to kind of give him a mustache and then glue my bead right there into the center. The last thing we need to do is add the stand. I'm gonna use some fix all adhesive and some hot glue. We'll glue it right there into the center. And with that, this project is complete. y'all this is Kay. For this project I'm going to be using one of these bamboo rings. They come two to a package. I'm going to be using the larger one. I got them at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using one of these rub-on transfers, just part of this package. This also came from the Dollar Tree. Five of these small wooden stars. I got them in this package at the Dollar Tree. 14 pieces to the package. I'm going to be using one of these six inch wood rounds that I got at Hobby Lobby in a package when they were on sale. I'm going to be using this ribbon package that I got at Michael's when it was 50% off, so $5 for 50 pieces of ribbon. Although some of the ribbon is really thin, but most of it is very good ribbon. We'll need some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm also going to be using this chalk paint by Plaid in the colors Imperial and Nautical. And of course, I'll use my hot glue gun. So I started out my project by painting all of the little stars in the white Waverly chalk paint. This did take a couple of coats, especially the edges, which are always really dark on these wood cutouts. And then I painted the wood round, the edges and the front with the nautical blue chalk paint. When you use the rub-on transfers, you want to just cut out the part that you're using for the current project and keep everything else intact so that you can use the other pieces later. So I'm going to use this USA. You peel off the backing and you're going to center it down onto the wood round. And then I'm going to come in with a popsicle stick and I'm just going to rub it all over the USA, hence the term rub on transfer, because it will transfer it to the wood round. Y'all, it turned out much prettier than I even thought it was going to be. Super shiny, super good coverage. I decided I wanted my stars to be around close to the outer edge, the same distance as much as possible all the way around. So once I placed them down and got them like I wanted them, I'm just going to come in with my hot glue gun and glue them down onto my board. I took this wider piece of ribbon that came in that same package from Michaels and I decided I would kind of center it down. I'm going to place some glue right there on the ribbon and then place down my board, kind of centering it where that top star is right in the middle. And then we'll turn it over onto the back and glue it to the bottom part as well. And once we do that, we're going to place it onto the wooden bamboo ring and I'm just going to loop it around on both ends and at first I'm not gluing it to the bamboo ring I'm just going to glue it back onto the back of the wood round and then we'll just cut off the excess part of the ribbon that we don't need right now and I'm just sort of suspending it between the ring if you will So I don't know if you recall or not, but if you were watching last week, I used that same package of ribbon to do a project already. So today I'm kind of using all the leftover pieces from those cut off pieces of ribbon, plus all the ribbon that was left in the package. And I will supplement it with just a few more pieces of ribbon from my stash. But I'm going in and I'm cutting all the pieces into eight inches long. 
even the shorter pieces would net me at least two that were left over and then for a complete piece which is about 40 inches long I would get about five pieces. And now I'm going to start putting it together. I'm just going to simply wrap those pieces around and tie them in a knot and try to keep them as even as possible. I am rotating red, white, blue, red, white, and blue. I'm using different red ribbons at a time, blue ribbons. I'm just really mixing it up as much as possible and work my way around the piece. This is a good project to do when you sit in front of the TV and you just can mindlessly work your way around the circle. I'm going to speed this up and then I'm going to show you at different intervals about halfway through and so forth. And here we are coming up on about quarter of the way around totally finished. You want to push all those knots together really tightly. Here I am at the bottom. We're about halfway done and I'm showing you that you really want to pinch that ribbon. That's why I didn't glue it down and get as close as you can so that it kind of blends into the rest of the ribbon. But those ribbons that the sign is suspended from to the right and the left, make sure you pinch it really well, add more ribbon and tighten it up. And that's what it looks like so far. We're halfway around our hoop. And now for this reveal, we are three-fourths of the way around the hoop. And this is what it looks like so far. All along, I'm making sure that I push everything as tightly together as possible so that it will be stiff in the end. Here I am taking some red and white twine that I found in my stash. I'm just going to cut off a piece, turn it on to the back, and I'm actually going to place it underneath that loop at the top, tie it really tightly, and then come up from the side and then tie another knot. And that just makes a hanger for the piece. And there's our finished piece. If you want your ribbon to stand up and be even more stiff, you can use a fabric stiffener and you can make sure that it sticks out to the side. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a wooden heart cut out. I did cut mine with my laser, but you can get something almost identical to this at the Dollar Tree. I had planned on using one like that, but I couldn't find what I had done with mine. Three wooden stars, you can get these from Dollar Tree, Walmart, or Hobby Lobby. White chalk paint and red, white, and blue acrylic paint. Some twine some Mod Podge, some iridescent glitter, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. Kay and I both love patriotic decor. We have a strong military presence in our family and we love showing our patriotism. I really like making simple projects that I can incorporate into my decor rather than changing everything out. And this is one of the simplest projects that you will make. We are really just going to be doing some paint and gluing some pieces together. I start off by painting my wooden heart with my white chalk paint. This is going to give it a good base for that acrylic paint. That acrylic paint really comes in streaky looking and when you put this down, it helps so that you don't have to have so many coats. It's also going to be the base for my white stripes. Then I'm gonna give my stars a good coat of paint as well. I do paint all of them on the front, the back, and the sides, and then we'll set it aside and let it completely dry. Once that paint is dry, I'm going to lay my stars out the way that I want them. And then I'm just gonna kind of roughly sketch in a square on one side and then some wavy stripes on the other side and down the bottom. This is going to be a flag, but not a real flag. This is supposed to be whimsical and just give you the impression of the flag without being an exact duplicate. 
Now I'm gonna come in with that blue acrylic paint and I'm going to paint that square up in the corner with it. It did take several coats. I mixed cobalt blue and admiral blue and it still looks streaky. I will come back after this all dries and give it another coat and that will help with that. Then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna paint every other stripe with my cherry red paint. And it took two coats as well. It was kind of streaky and then we will leave that to dry. For my stars, I originally thought I was going to do doodling around them, but I've decided that I like the idea of covering them with glitter. I like the idea of that sparkle and shine on this project. So I just painted each one with a good layer of my Mod Podge. Then I pour my glitter on top of it and I shake off the excess. Now don't worry, we're not going to waste that. I will be able to put it back in my bottle. That one bottle has probably lasted me four years. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to the stripes on my heart. I paint them in with my Mod Podge. I cover them with my glitter and I shake it off. Then I'm gonna set it aside and let this glitter completely dry. Now we will lay our stars out, figuring out where we want them. I like the thought of having them hang over just a little. And then I'm gonna attach them with some super glue fix-all adhesive and some hot glue. This is going to hold this no matter where you hang it. To get rid of that excess glitter on the parts that I didn't want glittered, I'm just gonna use a clean brush and brush it off. And then we're going to add our hanger. I just take some twine, feed it through from the back, tie a triple knot and trim that off. And then I'm just going to figure out how low I want it to hang. And then I'll pull the other end through my other hole, tie a triple knot, trim it off. And with that, this project's complete. We want to invite you to come with us on a crafty cruise getaway with four other YouTube channels. You can enjoy beaches and sand and all of the onboard ship amenities and spend time with six different YouTube crafters in classes curated just for you. It is going to be a blast, but space is very limited and it is going quickly. Make sure you go to the website www.craftycruisegetaway.com for all of the information. There will also be a link in the description box below. Can't wait to meet you there. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be making two wreaths using two of these red, white, and blue wreath forms that I got from the Dollar Tree. They are $5 each and they have a nice wreath form just like a metal one, but it's plastic. If I were to use a metal wreath form it would cost a dollar 25 and a roll of mesh to cover it would be at least five dollars so i think these two wreath forms are going to be a great bargain i'm going to be using this usa wooden sign that i got from the dollar tree each individual letter is placed on a ribbon i'm also going to be using some of these glittered stars that i got from the dollar tree they also hang three to a ribbon and i did find some that had red and white stripe and blue with white stars i'm also going to be using this wooden sign from the dollar tree only the last one that says usa i'm also going to be using some floral picks that i got from hobby lobby mine are from last year when i got them on sale but they have them again this year and they are three rockets to the stem I will be using these wired ribbons for the first wreath and I will be using these three ribbons that are also wired for the second wreath. I have double front doors. I will be using some heavy duty floral wire that is covered and finally I will use my Pro Bow the Hand to make my bows, several chenille stems and my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is separate all of those pieces from those little signs from the Dollar Tree. I'll take the ribbon off the back, remove the staples. I'm doing this for the stars, the USA, and the smaller USA. And then I'll take several chenille stems, fold them in half, and use my wire cutters to cut them in half. And I thought I could just come in with a regular stapler long as it was heavy duty and staple my chenille stems to, to the back of all of my pieces. But that did not work at all, y'all. 
these pieces were thicker than I thought they were. So I ended up getting out my heavy duty stapler with quarter inch staples in there and I started stapling them into the back and then of course I added some hot glue on top as well but I found out that my staples were still a little bit long. So I cut out some chipboard pieces from just some scrap I had, really thick stuff. And then I'm going to put it in between the staples and my piece. When I staple on the chenille stems, it will have some room so that the staples don't come through the front of my letters. And then of course I sealed everything with hot glue also. And now we have a way to attach everything to the wreath form. To make a bow, I'm using my Pro Bow the Hand. I'm going to use three pegs because it's going to be a simple nine loop bow. Here I am pulling my ribbon and stacking them one on top of the other and about an inch or two in, I'm going to take a piece of heavy duty floral wire and twist it around and everything will be secure now. So then I'll get out my Pro Bow the Hand and I'm going to come over and you're going over the middle peg and the home row at the bottom and we'll attach it with that heavy duty floral wire to the middle of our home peg and then we'll wrap the rest of the wire around the top and then we'll pull the bottom wire down to that nail at the bottom one time and tuck it in and then we just wrap around the peg we twist our ribbon a half turn hold it with our thumb and we move over to the next peg to the left and you can see that my blue ran out but that's okay we made it work and we'll pull it here to the middle once we get it there we're going to pull our wire tight and that makes our bow secure and once we do that we're going to allow for a ribbon tail we're going to bring a large loop here at the bottom and reattach it to the wire as well i didn't really measure it but i think it's about eight inch tails and we'll twist that in nice and tight as well and then i'm going to take my scissors and just cut the halfway mark or between the loop there and the next step is to begin fluffing our bow. What you want to do is reach in and separate the loops and you want to pull, say, the red one up, the colorful one in the middle, and the blue one to the side, and then do the opposite as you work your way across the bow and through the loops. Then we're just going to dovetail the ends by folding the ribbon in half and cutting from the fold out diagonally towards our wire. And we'll do our final fluffing. And then I attach the bow to the middle of the top, right in the center. Just twist that wire around the back into that wreath form. And then we just let our ribbon tails hang down. I'm coming in with my letters, the U, the S, and the A on the left side. And again, I just stick my chenille stems down through our mesh there and attach them to the frame in the back. And then for the right side, I'm going to separate these two pieces that are on wires. We'll trim off that wire as well to make it a little shorter. And then I'm just going to twist them down through the reef and kind of pull it around one of the bars in the back. And the last thing I'm going to do is attach one of these red stars kind of at the base of where the firecrackers are. And with that, this project is complete. It's very colorful and looks really nice on my door, on my porch. The video just doesn't do it justice. For wreath number two, I'm going to start once again by making a bow with the Pro Bow the Hand. I'm going to set up my ribbons by stacking them one on top of the other, and then I'll attach my heavy duty floral wire, oh, about a couple of inches in. I just fold it in half and then fold it really tightly around it. And then we'll set that to the side. And this time you may notice that I have more pegs on the board. I've added one more to the right and one more to the left. So we're going to have more loops. Let's set this up the same way. We fold it around the middle peg, pull it down, wrap the wire around the top, and then one time around that nail at the bottom. And then we will begin moving our way to the right. We will twist it around the first peg, hold it at the the middle as we come around and each time it's a half turn. 
and then we'll continue this process going from right to left changing it up each time and always notice that the right side of the ribbon is turned to the outside of the loop every time you come to your home peg you're going to do a half turn and it always comes to the middle of the peg not the bottom or the top and now we've gone around the last peg i'm bringing it back to the middle i will unravel our floral wire and pull it really tight around the ribbon and then for the loops at the bottom i'm just cutting it right here where the one ran out and leaving the loops kind of long i'm going to come in at the end and of course twist it back into the wire because those longer pieces will cut those apart and that becomes our ribbon tails they're a little long and i'm going to leave them that way for this particular bow we'll remove all of the pegs so that we can take our ribbon off the board and of course every bow needs a lot of fluffing and just like the last bow we're going to separate the loops by pulling them to the right and the left keeping the same colors as much separate as we can and that just makes a loopy full bow and all of the colors are integrated i'm going to attach it to the middle of the bottom this time and let it hang down making sure that i put it on a crossbar at the back so it stays in place you can always glue it if it moves around now i'm going in and i'm going to fold the ribbon in half and cut towards the wire and that will dovetail all of the ends now i'm leaving these really long and you can see here in a second that i'm going to kind of twist them and just kind of wind them around my finger it just gives a different look you could also cut them shorter if you would like but i thought we would just keep all of the amount of ribbon so that we have a different look for this wreath i'm going to attach to the left three different stars i'm going to use a solid blue a red with white stars and then a red and white stripe and i'm just starting to, at the bottom and kind of working my way to the middle of the top twist those wires in good and then again you can attach them with glue at the back also i'm going to once again use two of the firecrackers attach that to the right of the wreath the wire is really thick so it takes a few seconds to get it in and then we'll place on this little usa sign and that's pretty much it for this wreath i love how they both hang on my front door so much for watching today if you saw something you liked we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions we just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow we are also over on tiktok instagram facebook and pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well if you enjoyed this episode check out these videos for even more diy inspiration Bye, y'all.